side of pork here split it's beautiful still got its head on have a look at that gruesome so what I want to do is get the head off take the cheeks off gonna do it through the atlas joint there the very last joint still got its brains in look at that mmm so yeah literally off with its head box of delights so nose to tail butchery then using every part of the animal uh, I love using the head what you can see then is three pigs heads all in different stages of processing obviously we've got the half pigs head still got the eye in if we flip it over brains the whole lot what we want is that bit there the cheek and the the jowl and what we have here is the jowl and cheek still on the mandible, which is the jawbone. Now, if we were to cure that and cook it off, that would be a classic bath chap, meaning we cure it, we cook it, we take the skin off, and then just dip it in breadcrumbs. And that's a very, very old fashioned way of using up the pig's head. We call it charcuterie now, I guess. And then we can take that one step further to this here. It's got the cheek attached. This is the jowl. And we can make this into the glorious sounding face bacon or hogshead bacon or the Italian guanciale, which is what we're going to be doing today. So I had two pig's heads. I've got the other one of these over here. What I want to do is take the cheeky jowl off that. I'm gonna have a go at this. I wanna show you this. So I'll be curing that. We make a bath chat, but first of all, we get rid of those bits and I'll show you how to take the cheek off that head. Okay then, this is what I like to call glorious Technicolor. Never the prettiest thing a pig's head under any light, as you can imagine. So what we're doing then basically is from the mouth, a line straight across and that allows us to pick up the cheekbone the mandible as you'll see as I just with the knife horizontal this is one way to dull the blade on your knife it's so hard and obviously scraping on that bone scraping on the teeth just gently Peeling it away, cut it off there, cut it off there, and we are left with that piece. Okay, so we're left with this cheek. Just want to take the glands off. Such tough cut of meat. This knife is actually brand new. Let's see if I can get a bit of. edge on it just trimming off all the nasty bits I suppose and I'm gonna square it up so you've got a look you can see what we're gonna be curing there's nothing this end so what I will do is just where that cheek ends square it off yeah and I think that will be perfect and it's just a case now of weighing out our curing salts, getting it cured, getting it vac packed. Okay, now time for the fun part, the actual curing. So what I'm going to be using is an Insta Cure 
if you look at some of my older videos, there's quite a few on there, bacon curing. I have cured bacon making my own cure, but this easy cure, this super cure, whatever you want to call it, is just absolutely amazing simplicity itself. Now, I'm just going to use pure cure. There's no reason why you can't add some herbs, some spices or some sugar that, to that just to change the flavour. But I'm going to show you how simple this is. So it's 30 grams of the cure to every kilo of meat. This chunk here weighs 500 grams, so it's 15 grams of cure. And you get it and sprinkle it on and give it a really good rub in, making sure you use every bit of that cure. Now, as you saw earlier, I have got a few other pieces. What I did is I weighed them all individual so I know exactly where I am. So just a little bit on that skin, really rub one in, you know, and then just chase up all those last bits and just spend some time massaging it really well in picking up any random bits and then what you need to do then is put that in a ziplock bag i'm going to vac pack it then we can work out how long it takes to cure so with this cure it's a day for every half an inch i'd say that's an inch inch and a half so you're talking three days and two days over but yeah i'll get it that packed and i'll show you how it looks there they are in all their glory so like i said then half a day for every inch now i know that bath chap in its thickest part is two inches you know that's eight inches to us blokes. So, what's the date today? So it's the 14th of the 8th, I think, isn't it? Yeah, 21. So I should put that on every one. So, two inches, half an inch equals a day. So that's four days plus two days over. So that needs to cure for six days. And then these are all between one and one and a half inches. Now, the beauty of this cure is because it's measured out, it won't over cure, it won't get too salty. So if you leave it for an extra day or so, then do not panic. So on these little ones then, inch to inch and a half. So three days for an inch and a half, two days over. So they all want five days on them these want to be turned every two days and then we can see where we are but yeah that pretty much is the hard work done okay then so my bacon or my pig cheek bacon has been curing for five days i'll be honest with you these have been in for seven so i've got two of the other cheeks in different states of curing which i want to show you but all what we need to do when we get to this stage is take it out of the pack and you'll notice there the color how it's changed it's got harder what we need to do is just quickly swill that off in some nice cold water and then we can go on to the next stage bearing in mind this is now completely cured you could wash this off and slice a bit off and cook it but we just need to do a few more little things right i'll wash this and we'll carry on so there's that lovely pig's cheek this one here the one that i left on the mandible the jawbone is going to be my classic traditional bath chap 
So still on the bone, again, I'm gonna wash that off. But this will get cooked with some onions, carrots, celery, and then the skin gets peeled off and breadcrumbs get put on the top to make a classic bath chap. But that is for a later video. Put that there for good measure, because it looks beautiful. So like I said then, for all intents and purposes, this is completely cured. We just need to do a few little things. First off is to equalize our bacon, which is a very simple process. Is you put it in your fridge, either on a rack, or you could put some string through there and hang it up in there. And all that's doing is to let the cure that's still in there evenly distribute back through the meat. So, where are we? Let me just show you. So, one cheek straight out of the cure, washed off, and here's one I prepared earlier. So this one's been equalizing in the fridge for about seven days. As you can see, it's a lot drier, it's a lot firmer. This is the finished product. This is your finished pork face bacon, jowl bacon, whatever you wanna call it. Now to take this further into guanciale, all you need to do, string through there and hang it in a suitable place. You know, not too much moisture, not too much heat. If you can, if the weather's right, hang it in a shed or a garage for three or four weeks and you will have the ultimate Italiano dry cured product. But what I wanna do is I wanna take one of these and I wanna smoke it. And that's what we're gonna do next, the next stage. So we got smoked pig cheek bacon first of all though i'm going to cut a few slices off that just to show you what we got now bearing in mind this is a fatty cut of meat there's no denying it but well that knife is about as much use as a chocolate teapot let's have a look at this now take a slice Now you may be thinking, oh Scott, that's a lot of fat, that ain't a lot of meat. But what you've got to remember, this is not a chunky piece of meat. But what we are doing is using every part of the beast. And I can guarantee you, when we fry that up in a minute, that will be absolutely delicious. Now turned into guanciale, you air dry it, it'll go into carbonara, any of those pasta dishes or any dishes with, you know, beans, any stews, and it will add an amazing flavour profile. But, yeah, I think that looks stunning. Considering over here in the UK, we normally just take the pig cheeks off, uh, might make a brawn, but it's falling out of favour to the point of I don't know anybody who makes them anymore. So... Yeah, anything we can do with the gory bits is a plus. Oh, I love that. I love that. Let's go take another slice off and get it in the pan. And just when you thought it couldn't get any cooler, here is my smoked pig cheek look at that it smells absolutely divine now this has been cold smoked for 16 hours and what that gives you is a wonderful wonderful smoky product smoked over oak just a natural, natural, oh, just to die for. I mean, this is just wonderful, isn't it? If you can see those there, I'm gonna get those in the pan, which you may hear going on 
behind me. too shabby just have a look at that plain cured pig gel bacon and cold smoked pig gel bacon absolutely stunning and here I've had draining on a bit of kitchen paper is some of the end product and it is just amazing so the smoked one got a lovely depth of flavor mm -hmm. so good obviously it being the pig's head it's a little bit fattier i don't mind that i love it got a bit more integrity obviously the cheek the jaw all that movement but one thing you won't beat is the flavour. Just want to show you this, the pan I fried it in. I always fry my bacon. Now, I fried off those six slices. There was six. I know there's only three there. I don't know where the other three gone. Honest. Um, so yeah, just in a spot of oil. And this here is pure gold. What's rendered out. That's pure lard good old pig fat for your roast potatoes to fry any meat in it is the real deal pure gold that is beautiful anyway this bacon's going down at rain knots it's got to be hp sauce all day long Right, I'm going to eat this to sum this video up. Well, my dear friends, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Scott Reed Project when we turned that wonderful pig's head, jaw, jowl, whatever you want to call it, into these wonderful products. Everything but the squeal. So we got our plain bacon, our smoked bacon. Of course, we got that jowl still on the bone for our bath chap and as i explained if you wrap this in a uh, muslin cloth air dry it you've got your guanciale so next video will be the bath chap but until then if you've enjoyed this video please click subscribe when my face comes up down here somewhere also like and share the video on your social media platforms also find me on my social media on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at The Scott Reed Project. So until next time, I'm going to fry a little bit of this off, a bit more of this off. And I'll be a proper bacon sarni with brown sauce and a cup of Rosie Lee. Take care, my friends.